Okay, fellow babies, welcome back to the Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. I am pleased to be here. I'm going to give you that last pitch. You get it on Sifted.net first if you're a premium subscriber. We are in a business. I am doing this for free, but my editors and my producers are paid and they need to get paid. They have to schlep down here, set up expensive equipment to take these. So please consider paying 30 bucks a year for a premium subscription to Zifted.net. If you put the code Pactor in the discount code box, you'll get 10% off your first year. So $27 for 50 episodes of Pactor Lovin', come on. Uh, but if you can't afford it or you choose not to afford it, you're getting this content a week later on YouTube and we're happy to give some Pactor Lovin' to all our fellow babies who are not Zifted.net premium subscribers. Let's get to this week's questions. If you have a question, submit them to me on Twitter at Michael Pactor or to at Sifted Games and include the hashtag Pactor Factor and we will answer as many as we can. So we have a question from Sifted from Wilson on Sifted. At this point, what can Microsoft do, if anything, to close the gap between the Xbox One and the PS4? Nothing. So you asked it right. At, what, at this point, what can they do, if anything? They can't do anything. So before we bash Microsoft, because you guys all know I am an Xbox fanboy. I am an Xbox. I prefer everything on the Xbox. Always have. The only console I ever play multiplayer on is the Xbox. And I, I actually became that guy because I bought Fallout 3. I bought it with my own money on the PS3 and it crashed about every 15 minutes for my first 100 hours until I was talking to Bethesda and they said, oh, get it on the Xbox 360, it's much better. And it crashed zero times. I had to start again and I didn't mind because it crashed zero times. So I became an Xbox solely because of that game. And when did that game come out, 08? So it's been a long time and it, you know that was it. I didn't even, and I had my white Xbox. I didn't even get Red Ring of Death until like 2012, so it lasted me a long time. Anyway, um, no, I think that if you go back and you kind of think in history, the PlayStation, the 1995 PS1 PlayStation, sold about 100 million, 110 million units. The PS2 sold 170 million units. The Xbox 360, which is the most successful Xbox ever out of two, sold 80 million. So literally, the best-selling Xbox ever sold fewer than half as many units as the best-selling PlayStation ever. So we should start every console cycle assuming Sony's gonna outsell Microsoft two to one because they have twice as many people who know what their console is and like it. And by the way, they make great consoles. I mean, most people, the first console they ever had is a PlayStation. I say most in just raw numbers. Most super hardcore gamers' first, first console was a Nintendo console, but most real people that aren't hardcore gamers had a PlayStation because Sony sold more than, uh, than Nintendo has. And so I think the fact that the PS4 is not outselling the Xbox One by two to one right now is remarkable. I mean, the Xbox One is a great console but Sony is winning back its fan base everywhere in the world except perhaps the US and they're winning them back okay in the US. They're, you know, they're outselling Microsoft. I, I, I'm not supposed to give you MPD numbers, but let's just say the lead uh, life to date is nine to eight and you guys can plug in how many units that is, but it's nine to eight. So they're not crushing the Xbox here. I know that the fanboys love to look every month when PS4 sells 312,000 units and Xbox One sells 298, but it's nine to eight, I promise. It's not, not, not much more. Um, my guess is Microsoft is gonna really try hard to win in the US and they're probably gonna fail. Um, they're gonna hope to win globally and they're pretty definitely gonna fail. And it is not because they suck. It's because first party content is not differentiated enough between PlayStation and Xbox to make a difference. Halo is great, so is Last of Us. 
You know, every Gears of War is great, so is Uncharted and Killzone, and you know, we can keep coming up with games, Little Big Planet and whatever. When you add it all up, they're both really good on first party, and they both pretty much have full support of all third parties. So what it comes down to is, if you like Gears and Halo, you got yourself an Xbox. If you like Uncharted and Last of Us, you got yourself a PlayStation, and that's just how it's gonna be. And the fact is, more people had a PlayStation before, more people are gonna have a PlayStation this cycle. So the answer is, Microsoft can do nothing. God bless them. I think as long as they make a profit and they sell a lot of boxes, they win. It doesn't make any difference who finishes first in the console race. And Sony, as long as they make a profit and sell a lot of boxes, they win. So I will say, it's really nice to see the PlayStation guys back on top because they suffered really mightily last cycle. It was a tough one for them. I think they went in cocky, expecting to win. They did not, and they're back. So uh, my, my only regret is that we don't have Jack Tretton you know, running PlayStation, and I mean, no knock on Sean Layden at all. He's great. I just really like Jack. I'm sorry that Jack didn't get to bask in the glory of being back on top because uh, he deserved it. He went through a lot of you know hard times with that with that PlayStation 3, and they're back on top. Sean, you're doing a great job. No knock on you at all. I just really like Jack a lot, and I'm sure you did too. From Sifted, from Jan Ivar, do you see any meaningful signs of the mobile games market turning away from free to play? and focusing more on premium games like Lara Croft. Apple seems to have been trying to nudge that market or the market in this direction for a long while now with features and by marking free to play games better in the app store. Um, I think you're saying paid download versus free to play coming back. I'd say ne never. Um, you know, the guys who did paid download just flopped and the problem is that mobile games tend to be a phenomenon and they tend to be word of mouth and the best ones don't monetize immediately. I mean, when I say not immediately, not in the first hour, you know, so when you play a game, you tend to play it for an hour or so before you actually feel compelled to play to spend money. So let's think Candy Crush, you know, play the first 10 levels. If you spent money on the first 10 levels, you are a moron. I mean, you are incapable. Um, it, it, you know, I wasn't stymied on a level, I think it was like 141 or something, or 147. So I literally went 100 plus levels before I even got to where I had to think about it because they were so easy. They get harder and harder and harder. I'm on 1295 now. So the farther you go, the harder it gets and you're more tempted to spend money because there are levels that take me, you know, literally probably 100 tries to get through. Um, so that's kind of a puzzle game, but it's true of all games. I mean, Clash of Clans, when you're level one, you're just starting out, you're just harvesting resources and building things. You're not, nobody's beating the crap out of you at level one. They leave you alone. It's like, you don't need to spend money. It takes you a while to get into it. So what the free to play guys have learned is give it away and you have a chance of millions of people trying your game. If millions of people try your game, thousands of people will pay you and you will make money. If you charge people up front, then thousands of people will buy your game and then they don't tell anybody about it and you don't get the millions. The way to get to be the 100 million a year, 200 million a year free to play game is to get 100 million people to try it. And you can't get 100 million people to try it if you charge them for it. So again, the free trial is what hooks people. Uh, the free to play and making it challenging enough that somebody can get through it without spending money, but that people with more uh, money than time are willing to spend money, that's the balance, that's the right thing to do. So no, I do not think paid downloads are gonna overtake free to play. Every mobile company I can think of has gone exactly the opposite. They started out as paid download, that was EA, that was Glue Mobile they switched to free to play. Uh, that was Game Loft. Everybody who is, is anybody in gaming has gone from paid download to free to play. So I do not think that it's gonna revert back. I think that's a bad business model and even Nintendo is gonna do free to play. So don't think so. Our next question comes from Sifted from Sega. It's a lot of vowels. 
Can you foresee any situation in which the Federal Trade Commission would get involved in the video game industry concerning antitrust monopoly laws? Um, they get involved every time there's an acquisition. So uh, every time anybody in the industry has bought anybody else, especially public companies. So when uh, when Electronic Arts bought Jamdat, Jamdat Mobile, Jamdat was a public company and the FTC had to review that and had to approve the deal. Uh, when Electronics Boutique merged with uh, GameStop, the FTC got involved and had to approve that deal. So yes, this happens all the time. Uh, you know, I, I, I think if it happens outside the US, obviously US agencies don't get involved. So Square and Enix's merger didn't involve US antitrust approval, but it involved Japanese antitrust approval. Um, we haven't had a merger for a while, so you, know, you really haven't had, you've had more bankruptcies than mergers, which is kind of sad because I think it would have been better for everybody if Midway and THQ and Acclaim you know, had been purchased by somebody instead of going out of business and being liquidated. But you know, what we ended up with is some of the better properties ended up at like Warner Brothers with Mortal Kombat, you know, and, and Deep Silver with uh, Saints Row. So, you know, some of the properties got saved, other properties didn't, and they're kind of gone, which I think is sad. Um, whatever happened to Turok, for example? The Federal Trade Commission exists to make sure that trade practices are fair. So what they're trying to do is make sure that the consumer is protected from what's called anti-competitive practices, which would include things like price fixing. You know, so agreeing, we're gonna raise the price of games to 100 bucks. And if you have enough market power, like if, if EA, Activision, Nintendo, Take-Two, and Ubisoft all merge together and decided game prices would be 150 bucks, then guess what? Game prices would be 150 bucks. So the FTC exists to make sure that doesn't happen that no one uh, producer has enough power to jack up prices. And, you know, I mean, I guess it would be true if one guy owned all the chickens in the, on the, you know, in the country and produced all the eggs, or another guy owned all the cows and produced all the milk. You know, what the FTC exists for is to make sure that there is fair marketplace competition so that if one guy raises the price on milk, he won't sell as much because somebody else will offer it cheaper. And that's true with airfare, you know, it's true with everything. I mean, now Apple can raise the price of this thing to 5,000 bucks, and guess what? Samsung will sell a hell of a lot more phones because there's competition. They don't have the same phone. Apple makes their own proprietary phone, but the Samsung Galaxy would look like a bargain at one-tenth the price of an iPhone. When they're the same price, then you pick the one you like better. And they're the same price because Apple has to price about where Samsung is. They cannot price twice or three times as much. Trust me, Apple would, and some of you morons out there would pay it. I'm not one of those. All right, fellow babies, here's something we haven't had in a while. We have a Nintendo NX question from Sifted, from McEaton. When do you predict the Nintendo NX will be released in the US? That is an excellent question. I can talk about Nintendo's past practice and use that as a predictor of the future, um, but I don't know. Uh, Nintendo's past practice has been to announce their next generation consoles at E3 and to release them 18 months later. And they typically will have a prototype and a couple of game markups, you know, something where you can play something, but they take about 18 months. and. Last I checked, we don't have 18 months until the end of 16. So it is less likely that something's coming out in 16, but the rumors out there are that there are NX dev kits out there. We don't know how long they've been out there, but if the rumors have leaked, they've probably been out a couple of months. It is really slightly possible that developers can make something for an NX console launch in fall of 16 and do a quality product in 13 or 14 or 15 months, slightly possible. The more the NX looks like a PS4 or an Xbox One, the more likely it is it's coming out in 16. 
the less it looks like an Xbox One or a PS4, the less likely. So if, it, if it's a different language, it requires developers to tweak a lot of things from Madden or FIFA or Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto in order to get it ready for the NX One, 13 months is probably not enough time and it's probably a 2017 launch. So again, not knowing what the NX is, I don't really know when it's coming out. I would say 20% chance it comes out in 2016 in the US, 80% chance it comes out in 2017. If you don't see it before E3, there's a 0% chance it's coming out in 2016. Bold prediction for Pactor Factor. Star Wars Battlefront, next gen only, is going to be outsold by Call of Duty, according to MPD, in the month of November, by a lot. Now, let me qualify that, because I'm, I'm pretty confident in this prediction. Let me qualify that. In my view, there are two kinds of people who buy games. People who buy them for themselves and people who buy them for others. I think that almost every game at holiday, so almost every November, December game, is more of a gift giver purchase than it is self-purchase. And that's because, as you know, game sales are typically the largest in December. December software sales are dominated by gift givers. It's a very easy thing to buy somebody for Christmas. So you would think that was the pattern for all games, but it's not. Call of Duty tends to sell about the same number of units in November as it does in December. And you know why? Because all your friends are playing Call of Duty multiplayer and they all switch over at the same instant to the new game. And if you want to play with them, you better switch over too. So more people are going to buy Call of Duty Black Ops because they're playing Advanced Warfare now or they're playing Black Ops 2 and all the people they're playing with are switching over, they're not playing Ghost. All the people they're playing with are switching over, so they've got to do it too. So you get a pull forward of game sales in November for that title. Star Wars, not so much. People aren't playing Star Wars, they might be playing the beta. But there's no real compelling reason to rush out and buy it the first instant. Like, all your Call of Duty friends aren't all buying Star Wars and switching over. It will build that kind of an audience, and I think if it stays multiplayer for a couple of years and there's another Star Wars multiplayer, sure. But it doesn't have that kind of base. So Star Wars should follow the normal pattern, which is about one-third of sales in November and about two-thirds in, in uh, December, excuse me, where Call of Duty is more like 50-50. Therefore, my bold prediction, Call of Duty next-gen only outsells Star Wars next-gen only by probably as much as 50%. So you might see an MPD number that is something like, you know, uh, probably something like 3 million for Call of Duty and 2 million for Star Wars. Something like that, MPD package only, US only. That's gonna be the only metric we can measure. We're gonna get that on December 10th. So on December 11th, you're gonna hear some of my competitors saying, boy, Star Wars sucks, nobody's buying it. But It'll come back in December because ask your grandma if she knows what Star Wars is, and I think she does. And she might be able to tell you Call of Duty is a video game, but she doesn't know what it's about. But Star Wars, she knows what it is. Okay, fellow babies, thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Pactor Factor. Uh, remember, if you're a Sifted.net premium subscriber, you get this content immediately. If you are not a subscriber, you're going to have to wait a week and get it on YouTube, and we're okay with that. But the premium subscription to Sifted.net is only 30 bucks a year. You get 10% off of that if you use the code PACTOR in the discount box. So please join Sifted.net because we got to pay for these episodes somehow. Um, thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want to submit questions, you can do so on Twitter, at Michael Pactor or at Sifted Games. Use the hashtag Pactor Factor. And if you're a Sifted.net premium subscriber, you can submit them on the site. Thanks again for joining us. See you next week.